begin with breaking news. Two Detroit police officers have been shot. Tonight, police are searching for this suspect, 60-year-old Raymond Durham. It happened at Tillman and Ash. That's on the west side. And, of course, police have a large area blocked off there. We have crews on the scene, team coverage tonight. Of course, Detroit Police Command Center setting up there. We just heard from Chief James Craig moments ago on Channel 7. Um, Detroit Receiving Hospital is where those two officers are tonight. And we're going to go now to 7 Action News reporter Curtis Jackson out in the middle of it all. Curtis. Well, we just got that briefing from the chief. The good news is that it appears that both officers will be okay. One officer suffering a gunshot wound to the ankle, the other officer suffering a gunshot wound to the neck. And also one of the officers was hit in the chest, but did have one of protective vests, and that is believed to have saved his life. Essentially, there were special operations officers working in the area that you mentioned. Uh, they encountered a suspect who was acting suspiciously as part of a potential narcotics operation. They approached that suspect and the suspect opened fire. Uh, the suspect you identified as Raymond Durham. He is a man that they are actively searching for right now, considered armed and dangerous. Had an opportunity to talk to the chief about the circumstances of the shooting, as well as the effect this is all having on public safety as his officers. Here's what he had to say. Tragedy is struck again here in the city of Detroit involving Detroit's finest. The good news, both are being treated. Uh, here's what we know right now. 8.15 tonight, um, two of our officers assigned to the 3rd Precinct Special Operations is working in, ironically, in the same area where uh, Colin Rose was fatally shot. Uh, we've been working in this area, as you know. So two of our officers, one with 20 years seniority, another with four years uh, in this area, saw a suspect uh, in the vicinity of a, a narcotics location. Uh, what drew their attention to him, he was acting fidgety, moving around. They got out to investigate further. When they did so, they went to approach to try to identify the suspect. The suspect uh, then reached in his pocket, pulled out a gun, firing shots at both officers. Good go. All right, as you heard, Chief Craig, they're giving us the update on everything that is going on with respect to searching for that shooter. And as you may have heard, and uh, he did mention the fact that this was in the same area uh, where Wayne State University police officer Colin Rose was shot and killed. We wanted to know if those two things were possibly related, if this uh, case that they were working on tonight was related uh, to the shooting of Officer Rose. The chief says that they were working in on that investigation at the particular time. Uh, that this happened, but he did not provide any specific details about ex uh, exactly what they were doing or how it related to the uh, killing of Officer Rose. So again, we have two uh, Detroit uh, police officers who are in the hospital here recovering from gunshot wounds. They are expected to be okay. We have one officer suffering a gunshot wound to the neck, another officer suf suffering a gunshot wound to the ankle, one officer life saved by a vest. Uh, after two bullets also hit him in the chest as well. Uh, we are going to continue to follow this story throughout the evening, bring you any updates as they come in. Uh, Chief Craig has told us that he will come out and update us as the information becomes available. But again, the good news out of this is that these officers look like they're going to be okay. Live in Detroit, Curtis Jackson, 7 Action News. All right, Curtis, thank you. You know, Chief Craig did tell us that family of the officers are being notified. He did mention one, a 20 year veteran, the other on the job for four years. So this all happening at one time as Curtis standing there at the hospital where family I'm sure is arriving. And what the good news is they are, it sounds like they are going to be okay. And I'm hearing now from sources they are, they are stabilized. So okay. hopefully that their recovery will continue. We're going to go now to Brianne Palmerini, who is live at the command center that's been set up near the scene. Brianne, what can you tell us? Well, Heather and Glenda, the scene here has really changed since we've been here. There are so many cars filling the street now. They do have the mobile command post up here, and there are dozens and dozens of officers here. When we first arrived, they had just had some streets blocked off in certain areas. This is the scene where the shooting happened. It's just down one of these side streets here at Tillman and Ash. We are on Michigan Avenue now. It's again, it's like a parking lot here with officers' cars. They have a lot of unmarked vehicles out here right now. I was told to kind of be careful with what video we show of some of the officers that are out here. A lot of them work undercover. So 
At this point, we do know that the helicopter has been up in the air that's been kind of circling continually since we've been out here for the last hour or so. And also officers just driving down all of these side streets with their flashlights out, their big lights looking all around. We originally were much further into the scene, but um, we were in the way of the investigation. Officers pushed us out several times. so. We're, we're out here now. This is where the media has been kind of pushed back onto this side of Michigan Avenue. And there is just a large contingent of police officers out here as they continue to investigate. We're still hearing the helicopters fly. We do know that they are searching, actively searching for someone. We can see them out here looking. And then here's a picture of that suspect again, Raymond Durman. He is the man police are looking for right now and hopefully as we show this picture, as we air his name, as the officers continue to search, somebody calls in and gives police the information they need about this man. Of course, we're continuing to stay on top of this as we can, you know, bring you any information as we get it. Right now, they have a command post set up back here, uh, dozens of officers in tactical gear. We're seeing a lot of them go into the neighborhoods, again, shining their lights. They are actively searching right now. But of course, we will continue to keep you updated from the scene. We'll send it back into the studio. All right. Thank you so much, Brianne. Our team coverage continues now with 7 Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville, who's just made it to where the search is going on. And Aaron, a lot of information being tossed about about what the officers were doing there and the approach to this man before he opened fire. Yeah, of course, this is a very fluid situation. A lot of information still coming in. We're a little bit closer to the scene right now. We're near Ash and Williams. The scene is just about a block up. We can sneak around. You can take a look over there. You can see the caution tape blocking one of the uh, police vehicles. And it, it may be hard to see, but there's also a bunch of cones around that vehicle, maybe marking where some shots were fired. If we take a look over here. You can see some more officers. They've been walking up and down Williams for a while, going behind uh, houses, shining flashlights. But just like Brianne said, we're somewhat near the scene and just very busy out here. Uh, the streets are absolutely blocked off. You can't get anywhere. Uh, a big, almost armor-type vehicle just made its way down the street just about five minutes ago before we came on live. But this is the area. This seems to be the hub right now where most of the officers have centered. If you take a look back down here, Adam, if we can go down Ash to the left side of your screen, you can see just about a dozen officers or so. Those are the guys and women who have been going up and down these streets looking for anything. Also, another note that's very important, especially for folks in this area that have been driving around, cops have been stopping every single car that comes in and out. We've seen them pop the trunks, looking in there, opening up car doors, trying to see if anybody is possibly hiding in some of these vehicles that are making their way around this area. But the helicopter, you can see it over there. It's it's hovered over there in the air. It's been circling for a while, but now it's been kind of getting lower and lower as it continues to circle. And like I said, you could, this is what we've been seeing the whole time, just vehicles, some unmarked, some marked, lights flashing, more over here that are coming down. And that, this is all we've been seeing. So we're going to continue to stay here for a little while. But right back there, that seems to be the hub in the center where the caution tape is and one of uh, Detroit's police cars has been blocked off and a bunch of cones on the ground and a door open down there marking maybe the spot where this all went down. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. We'll be out here for a little while longer. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. Certainly a huge presence there. The chief mentioned FBI, Wayne State, lots of agencies out there helping. helping. Yes, Aaron, thank you. Well, here's what we're learning about the suspect. Detroit police have given us the name and picture of Raymond Durham. He's 60 years old. Um, looking at his criminal history, here's what we know so far. He has convictions from 1992 for what appears to be a burglary and an arrest. In that case, it looks like he was found guilty on two counts of felony breaking and entering in a building. Durham also has an arrest from 2003 for a misdemeanor public ordinance crime. It's not clear whether he was convicted of that offense. Chief James Craig saying tonight that he considers Durham armed and dangerous. He's five foot eight, about 140 pounds. If you know where he is, please call Detroit police and of of course, stay with Action News as we continue to learn more about the suspect. We'll bring you the latest on air, online at WXYZ.com and in the Channel 7 app.